So I get this question a lot. What is the best DAW for electronic music? Can you recommend something? And since I'm using Ableton Live almost exclusively in my tutorials, people naturally assume that this is going to be my answer. But this is not the answer that I typically give. And so in this video right here, you're going to find out why. So today I will reveal which DAW I actually recommend for what type of producer, how beginners and intermediate producers can get the most out of any DAW. And at the end of this video, I will share with you how aspiring professionals, so producers, mixing and mastering engineers who actually want to make a living out of their craft can leverage the power of multiple doors. In case you don't know me, my name is Philip from Pick Yourself. I produce mix and master music professionally, typically in my studio in Berlin, which you've probably seen in other videos. Right now I'm in Valencia in Spain doing some remote work. And the only reason this channel exists is because I want to help you make progress with your music and share some of the lessons that I've learned over 15 years in the music industry working professionally on records. Let's first of all talk about why choosing the right doll matters so much. So a lot of you guys ask me what is the best doll for electronic music. And I think that's a really important question to answer because the DAW you choose directly influences the way you make music and especially the workflow of your creative process. Now when it comes to this question there's no one-size-fits-all answer. Each DAW has a different personality I would almost say. Different strengths, different weaknesses, different workflows that suit different people and styles. And while Ableton Live is super popular and I use it a lot, it doesn't mean that this is the perfect DAW for everyone. So I will now break down what makes a good DAW overall. What types of features and benefits do we actually need? What should we look for? I will then share with you what are some of my top recommendations. And at the end, I will also share with you my own workflow. So what DAWs am I using and why? All right, now let's talk about what actually matters when choosing a DAW specifically for electronic music. There are a few key features and DAW personality traits that you should look out for that will make your life easier down the line. First up, and this is a big one, MIDI capabilities. As you might know, electronic music still relies heavily on the MIDI protocol and everything that's connected to that. It has done so for decades and some DAWs actually make this a breeze and other DAWs make it a headache to work with. Now you might think that MIDI has been around for such a long time that every DAW must be capable of doing the basic MIDI stuff. And yes, that is true. The basic MIDI stuff is covered in almost any DAW. But to give you a specific example, when you try to work with MIDI in something like Pro Tools, for example, which is often considered an industry standard of professional recording studios in the traditional sense, it is such a different experience compared to something like FL Studio, Ableton Live, Bitwig, so these more modern DAWs that are built on MIDI to begin with. And so that means as a producer in genres like techno, house and EDM, you should look for a DAW that has advanced MIDI capabilities that makes it a breeze to work with MIDI to edit things and you should watch out for additional features like MIDI polyphonic expression, MPE and how is it directly integrated in all the tools. You should also check out some of these now coming AI augmented functionalities, something like the MIDI tools in Ableton Live 12 for example. This is one of the things where we can already see the future of MIDI editing. Now I've actually made a deep dive video about this here which you can watch on the channel but the bottom line of this is you need a doll that excels at MIDI. And this also includes working with external instruments. So sending MIDI, receiving MIDI signals and integrating also a potentially analog setup into your DAW. Next, you need a good selection of built-in instruments and effects. And believe it or not, that is not the case with every DAW. Now I'm talking about virtual instruments like synthesizers. I'm talking about creative effects that you can use. All of these must be built into your DAW because I don't want you to just chase around free tools here and there and getting overwhelmed with even more decisions that you have to make just to get started with making music. Now to give you a specific example, Reaper is a super customizable DAW. I love how you can customize the workflow to suit your specific needs but it's also on the other hand pretty bare bones when it comes to the stock instruments effects and all of that now other DAWs like Cubase like Logic like Ableton Live Bitwig Apple Studio all of these DAWs come with an excellent suite of stock instruments and plugins and this has been so different like a decade ago these stock tools have become incredibly good if you can't make great music with the stock tools of any of these DAWs then there's a process error there's something going wrong in your skill set in your knowledge, but it's definitely not the lack of tools. Now, the third important thing I wanted to look for is workflow and ease of use. And that is a big one. You don't want to waste hours just trying to find out how to do basic things. A good DAW for electronic music should have an interface that makes it fast and intuitive to lay down track ideas, to get some grooves going. And some DAWs are simply better at this than others. So I would look for features like a built-in looping function, watch out for how easy to drag and drop everything is, how much you can customize the layout of your DAW, 
all of these things make the workflow easier and better to work with. Now, once again, my experience with Pro Tools, and like, I don't want to bash them. It's just my personal experience. It has been really unintuitive and really hard to get around compared to other tools like Cubase, like Ableton, Bitwig. All of these DAWs are so much more intuitive and easier to work with in my experience. All right, now let's get to the juicy part of this video. Which DAWs do I actually recommend and why? But before we dive into this, I actually want to stress something really important. Whatever DAW you're currently working in, you should probably stick with it until you finish and release music consistently. Now, in my experience, the DAW is rarely the bottleneck. It typically comes down to skills, knowledge, and how you actually train your critical listening skills. This should get you to a point where you can finish and release music no matter what DAW you're using. It's always easier to blame it on the tools. Now, even if you're on something like GarageBand right now and you still have no idea how stuff works, you probably should stick with this for a moment until you finish at least some decent loops and then you can make the transition to a real DAW. Now, for those of you who are in this stage of, yes, I can produce loops and maybe song ideas, but I struggle with finishing music consistently, I have a free gift for you. It's called the Finisher Framework. You can get it at pickyourself.com slash framework. My three simple steps that help you finish at least one great sounding song per month. I think that's a great goal and I can share it with you for free. The link is also in the description. All right, let's now get to my recommendations. If you're mainly producing electronic music in genres like techno, house, EDM, electronica, all these connected genres, my recommendation is to go for either Ableton Live or Bitwig. Those two DAWs, in my experience, have most of the functionalities that you need with a lot of room for experimentation, really cool built-in effects, super creative, and that's basically all you need. Lots of our coaching students actually also use FL Studio. I personally don't vibe as much with the UI, with the sounds, but that is just my personal preference. If they get great results, I trust them that this tool is right for them. And so it's probably something you might also want to consider. Now, for those of you who produce electronic music, but you also work with lots of live instruments and you record a ton of stuff, I recommend you go for Cubase Pro or maybe Logic, which I don't really use that much, but Cubase is definitely the type of DAW that is very complete and in the middle between working with audio and working with MIDI. And it's pretty good all rounder, I would say. Now, some people who don't like Cubase or Logic go for Studio One. That is also fine. It's kind of the bitwig of the Cubase and Logic community. So that is also worth checking out if you don't vibe with these two options. Now, for those of you who are on a budget, you can either go for the smaller versions of the DAWs that I've just mentioned, or you go for Reaper, which is still a really affordable DAW. It's still super deep, super customizable. It has a bit of a steeper learning curve, I would say, and you have to augment it and get some external instruments. But there are great free options available. For example, Vital is a great synth that you can use, and pretty much everything else is also out there for free. You just have to do more research. So now that you have a good overview view of what DAWs are out there, let's talk about how you can actually get the most out of any DAW. First things first, learn the keyboard shortcuts. I know this sounds nerdy, but it is such a game changer when you actually adopt this into your way of working. So instead of clicking around, searching for a menu and figuring out what to do, you can go with your muscle memory and do command shift, command this, command that, and basically all the tasks can be done via keyboard shortcuts. Now, most DAWs let you customize the keyboard shortcuts. Some DAWs like Cubase even give you the option to create macros, so you can actually trigger a workflow of different things that happen one after another with a keyboard shortcut. That is absolutely amazing. I love it for this capability, but not all DAWs have that. So you start with the basic shortcuts like copy, paste, undo, redo, zoom in, zoom out, and then you move into the more advanced ones, especially when working in the audio or MIDI editor. You want to know how to, for example, shift octaves of a note or just move things around or change the grid. These kinds of commands, you use them all the time. So it's super handy to have the shortcut directly saved in your muscle memory. My next tip is to stay organized and this is really important, especially for messy creative types. So you want to stick with a folder naming convention, a file naming convention, and a folder structure that you just define once and you always stick to this, and this way you never lose any track of what's going on. You also want to mirror your products to the cloud, so you always have a backup available that even if your house burns down, you still have the project somewhere. I personally use Dropbox for this. It doesn't really matter what you use, but here is 
Here's the juicy part. I think you should avoid at all costs these types of splice and loop cloud subscriptions with the tool that they want you to use to filter through different sounds and presets because this is such a such a time waste. You can procrastinate forever just by flipping through millions of available presets and sound. It just gets confusing. The whole production will sound messy and there's a way better way. So I recommend you curate your own local folder in a structure that makes sense for you. I call this the secret weapon sound library and I show this in detail in my course The Prolific Producer. The essence of this is you want to come up with a way of sorting your samples and presets and you are behaving like the Berghain bouncer. You don't let anyone in except for exactly what you want to have in that folder. So by artificially limiting yourself you actually free yourself to create more music. And don't worry, you can expand this library later on, but in the beginning, I will be super strict. Then you want to also have a starting point template. So one project file that is saved as a template that has all the routing already done, the coloring, the naming schemes, and it must sit in the sweet spot between having everything laid out and being too bare bones. So somewhere in that range, you have this sweet spot and you have to, you have to find this out. There's no way around this. You just have to start with version one of your template and then later on figure out, okay, that was too complex, that was a bit too simplistic, and then you figure out your own sweet spot. Now, here's a little pro tip for you. I always include things like risers, swooshes, impact hits, somewhere in my template ready to use, so I can easily just populate transitions and make the flow instantly flow better. You can still swap them out later on, but it already gives you the feel of you're much closer to the finish line. It actually sounds like a finished product. We'll now get into the final chapter of this video. I will share with you when and why it makes sense to use multiple DAWs as a professional producer mixing mastering engineer. Before we get into this, if you got any value so far out of this video, then consider liking, consider subscribing to the channel. It really means a lot. All right, when does it make sense to use multiple DAWs? So as a pro, someone who earns a living from music, from working with artists and labels, I use multiple DAWs and I do this because they handle very specific tasks more efficiently and more effectively than any other tool could. So in essence, I gain more hours back that I can use for other things. So it gives me a lot of leverage. So for producing, I mainly use Ableton Live. And the reason is that I find that this is one of the most creative DAWs Ever. The stock tools are great, the MIDI capabilities are second to none, and especially these advanced MIDI tools that came with Ableton Live 12 are just so much fun to work with and you get really inspired really quickly. Now, I also love the way you can work with audio creatively in Ableton Live. So this switching between MIDI and audio in different ways, super fast, super intuitive. The granular synthesis possibilities in Ableton Live, I absolutely love them, but I would not use this for like properly editing audio. So working with vocals, for example, and tuning them perfectly, chopping them up, all of these things, I still think it lags behind. I also would never edit drums in Ableton Live. So other tools are much more advanced there, but Ableton Ableton, just like Bitwig, is a super creative DAW and if I were just to produce electronic music and make a living as an artist, I would probably just stick with that. Now, when it comes to mixing for clients, I use Cubase Pro. Now, the reason I do this is because it lets me customize the workflow for speed and efficiency. I'm so fast with the template that I've created in Cubase Pro. And if you want to, I can also walk you through this. Leave a comment below if that's interesting to you. And I can also show you what type of shortcuts I've programmed to be even quicker when working on client projects. Because every minute that I save, every click that is more intuitive. That all helps me get to a better result for the client because I'm in flow state and I don't worry about anything else. But it also obviously makes me more money because I don't waste time clicking around and searching for different things. Now, finally, for mastering, I use a specialized DAW called WaveLab. WaveLab is an amazing, super deep program just specialized on mastering. The audio editing capabilities are second to none. It's really good if you have to convert between different file formats, different sample rates and so on. And what I love about it is it has a batch processor built in. So that means I can convert different files, rename them, always just one single click and it's executed automatically. It even has a folder called watch folder. That's a super cool feature where you can program a batch process into one folder. So what I, for example, do is I export the main mastering file and then I drop it into to this watch folder and inside the watch folder there's an automatic process that's happening that converts this one source file into different formats 
spits them out, renames them in exactly the way that I want them to, and then it's basically ready to upload for my client. So why should you probably consider using multiple DAWs? Well, it only makes sense if you want to work in this professionally, if you want to make money from working with music, working with audio, and if you figure out that you can save a ton of time by using different DAWs, then it's actually worth investing in the DAWs, also investing in the upgrades, that's something we just cannot neglect, and also the time it takes to learn these DAWs. Something like WaveLab was pretty hard to learn actually. It's not too much documentation or actually really complicated documentation. But once you have this workflow integrated and it saves you some time, it actually pays dividends for the rest of your career. Now, here's my conclusion. Best door for electronic music is the one that you know the deepest. And this is true on so many levels, from keyboard shortcuts to the functionality to how to use the stock tools. You have to master these functions and it's gonna take time, but that's okay. It's absolutely worth it. Jumping between DAWs will not solve your underlying issue. If you use any of the DAWs that I've mentioned before, for example, Ableton Live, Bitwig, FL Studio, Cubase, Logic, it doesn't really matter. All of them will help you get to this result. So I would say it's a matter of preference, what type of workflow suits you best. But if you feel that this workflow intuitively resonates with you, then it will be fine and you just have to go deep now. For aspiring professionals, it can make sense to use multiple DAWs, but I would really assess the different features and not just jump between DAWs, but actually look for how can they complement each other in ways that will save me hours down the line. Now, I would love to hear in the comment what DAW are you using currently and why do you think it's the best one? And I will see you in the next video.